Hello, survivors of the wastes. Welcome to the garage, the premier destination in the wasteland where you can learn all there is to know. Want to build the best transport or improve an existing ride? No problem. Need to know the answers to your most important questions? Sure thing. Got to know all the nooks and crannies in every map? Be able to tell the myth from the truth? Become a better trader? Yes, yes, come right in. You're at the right place. You're watching the most detailed, useful, and frankly speaking, the best ever show for every true cross-out fan out there. It is meant for all who want to make the laws for this brave new world and not just follow the old ones. Buckle up, fellas. It's time to begin. The world of the wastes is full of opportunities and variety, which gives birth to many legends and myths. The survivors tell each other stories claiming they say they've seen with their own eyes, or maybe they lie a little for drama purposes, who knows. We collect the most interesting of such stories from the dead world and then put them to the test. Some say that it is impossible to make the right fly, whatever you do, whichever parts you install. So the main question for today is, can you fly your vehicle and cross out? If we take a look on user-made blueprints, we find many crafts designed to conquer the skies. The base logic says that these crafts must first defeat the force of gravity, meaning that the ride must follow some guidelines to achieve that. First things first, make the ride as light as possible with as many rocket boosters as you can. That should work. Let's give it a test. Well, that wasn't really flying, more like jumping. One of the lightest and perhaps the best cabins for the job is called Growl. It weighs very little and yields 9 points of energy. A gas generator should increase that value to 12. Precisely the number of boosters we will install into this flying craft. All the frames and spacer parts must obviously be as light as possible, such as the ones provided by the faction of lunatics. Don't forget that you can sort all your parts and storage by weight, too. Okay, let's try again. Looks like the ride needs more stability. When you do desk drive in your garage, you can enable the display of center of gravity for your ride by pressing the N key. In order for the craft to fly, you must concentrate most of the vehicle's mass just behind the central axis. If you overdo it, the machine will spin like crazy. The boosters must be installed evenly to balance the vehicle. Let's give it a shot. It worked! If you want some ready-to-use solutions from the Exhibitions tab, we recommend to look at the ride called Wyvern Can Fly. It uses the aforementioned design tricks, but is built using a wyvern cabin. Many in the waste believe that this ride is one of the finest air-capable machines currently available in the game. You can give it a try yourself. So, what can we conclude from this experiment? Can you make your ride fly? Yes, you can. It can even stay aloft for a little while. Can you use that flying ability effectively in battle? Hardly so. Combat Zone Cross Out is not just about machines, but also about combat maps on which these rides fight. A real expert of combat must be the master of its environment. Exactly for such individuals, we offer detailed reviews of all maps in the game. Starting with the bridge here. This arena has high hills and a deep dry riverbed. This huge difference in height allows for many different tactical moves and gameplay styles. There are three main ways to the enemy bases. The most obvious and the shortest route is the bridge, that the namesake of this map. You can't even imagine how many newbies perish trying to cross here. The bridge has virtually nothing in the way of cover, so if the enemy team assume defensive positions across, then going over the bridge is suicide. More experienced drivers that do want to cross it usually install invisibility modules, rapid-firing weaponry, and explosive spears hoping to cross, while leaving behind turrets and launching drones to divert attention. But what do you do if you come under fire on the bridge? You jump! Hopefully, you'll land on your wheels or tracks. 
If you don't have a jack, you'll have to lie on your side or roof for half a minute, which is also certain death. If you're lucky, you might retreat back to your allies, regroup, and attack again. The two other paths to the enemy weave around the hill on both sides. The road to the left goes beneath the bridge. The other way is longer, but it will also take you down to the riverbed and there joins with the left path. The final stretch of land is where the battles are often won and lost. If a well-organized attack by one team manages to deal a serious damage to the foe here, then all it will have to do is finish off the stragglers. Okay, let's talk tactics. If you prefer close combat or medium-range engagements, then you must wait at the downward ramp and attack with your allies. You can seize the initiative and lead the charge, hoping your allies will support in tow. If a fight under a bridge happens, use the cover available, such as a rusty ships and support columns, attacking the enemy when the opportunity presents itself. Rides with machine guns, shotguns, and rotating cannons will be right at home down here. Another common tactical solution here is sniper duels. Between the ramps leading to the riverbed, there are two hills that can be exploited by rides with accurate weapons. Cannons such as the Avenger, Judge, Executioner, and Scorpion, as well as homing missiles using shoot and scoot tactics work miracles here. The hills provide a great opportunity to support your team's advance from afar as long as the enemy snipers haven't still taken their hill. When the opposing team puts too much pressure in your team, even a single sniper in the hill can ease the pressure or at least draw enemy fire away. Usually proper snipers equip an optical sight, which makes it much easier to fight at range. Snipers can use another trick too. The longest path that goes around the hill to the right of the respawn leads to the point directly behind the riverbed. From that point on, you can see the ground behind the hill. If your allies attack, you will be able to support them and then join up with the rest of your team. Actual team play may differ from scenarios we just described. By playing in a well-coordinated team, the survivors of the waste can come up with smart moves and venues of attack. For example, four players can rush the bridge and smash the enemy opposition while they're trying to spread out to their positions. Test Drive it's in the name, guys. In this section, we will test drive quality ride builds from the Exhibition tab. Fan-made vehicles are many and unique. Among them, you can find veritable works of art and true marvels of engineering. Let's test out and discuss a couple of decent builds we came across. GMS G2 Author Phoenix Color Carbon This machine was built using the Jawbreaker cabin that has many useful advantages. First off, it has low silhouette and high mass limit. Plus, it generates hefty 11 points of energy. Now, what's obviously is good about this build is its weaponry. The designer decided to install two little boy cannons. If compared to the judges, they have higher damage output, but the shot spread is also considerably higher. Well, in the recent 070 update, the little boys got buffed up and they're more accurate, tougher and slightly heavier. So the choice of weapons is good overall. Hidden in the back, we got a heavy generator that adds two extra energy points for a total of 13 out of 12 required for this particular build. Perhaps the author simply did not have a light generator that produces one point, so he used whatever he had at hand. In this aspect, the build can be improved. There are chained wheels all over the place, the frontal wheels are steerable, while the rear wheels are regular just like with a normal car. The engine is light, consumes zero energy, while still providing a boost to the ride's performance. All in all, we have an impressive machine. Almost 5,000 power score, 1,232 structure points, and a mass of 8,784 kilos. That's a good balance right here. But there's still room for improvement. The ride can be made even better with a train plow in the front or even by simply moving the current plow slightly higher. The wheels can also be replaced with something tougher, for example racing or APC wheels. The generator can easily be replaced for a lighter version, 
while the engine can be removed altogether. Due to the solid mass of the ride, it does not really give you that much of an edge anyway. H1 Hummer Humvee Author Mad Max Color Mirage Metallic This vehicle is an epitome of effectiveness and good taste. Just look at all the parts of the ride installed and adjusted to create a well-designed ride where nothing is out of place. The vehicle is based on the cabin called Bear that provides hefty 10 points of energy. As for the weaponry, well, it has a vector machine gun that consumes 3 energy points and rapier autocannon worth 6 points. One last point of energy is used for a cooler stored in the trunk of the ride. What can I say, that's a good combo, since the cooler has the cooldown timer. The transport also has a light engine installed, which should help make the ride accelerate faster and smoother. Given the weight of the ride, it will actually work much better on this machine than previous one. The APC wheels add Buffy 170 structure points, which should make it hard for the enemy to immobilize the ride. Simply perfect. Well, if you really want me to be picky here, then I'd say the front could use more armor. Which is the way it is, probably, because all the extra stuff would turn the Humvee's appearance into something else. This transport is not a tank, so it does not have to tank in battle. We have fast and nimble vehicle for medium-range firefights and flank attacks, hence its 880 structure points should be sufficient for the task. You can use this one without any serious modifications on your part. Just get the parts, build, and enjoy. How can I join a clan? Join a clan, you need to be invited by the clan leader. On the official forums, there is a special section called Clans for clan searching and recruiting. Joining a clan gives survivors the opportunity to take part in the clan wars. Winners are rewarded with rare resource of uranium ore. It is necessary for high-level gameplay if you like to craft relic parts such as flamethrowers and mine layers. Why there is no official Discord channel for Crossout? There is one, it's called Crossout Official Discord. Anyone can easily enter it, right here. What is the self-destruct button on the consoles? You have to press both thumbsticks at the same time. Well, fellas, I guess that's it for today. I'll be seeing you in a week so you can put all you just learned to work, earn more experience in combat, come up with a new good questions and such. Trust me, I got more to tell you. Be seeing ya.